are the universe is not awash with water, but there is a lot of water out there. So the first ingredient we have, this is just a bowl, plastic bowl with a bin liner, is we have water. I know we have 50 goggles for everybody. You want them all to have No, they'll be okay for this. Yeah, okay. We will not get explosive outgassing. <laughs> okay. He says. <laughs> yeah. The second ingredient that um, that surprised people, comets are rich in element number six of the periodic table. So here I just have some carbon powder. Okay. Like some in. Comets were also found to be very rich in silicates. So ground up rock, silicon dioxide. Here I've got some sand. People always think I'm making this up, but one of the most staggering discoveries was that comets are rich in amino acids. We've so far spectroscopically discovered more than 70 different amino acids in comets. And so the stuff that gives Worcester sauce its flavour, we do find some of these chemicals in comets. Even more amazingly, Comets do not have Pinotage red wine, but they do have ethanol in and other members of the alcohol family. I normally use vodka, but I thought I would spoil myself. <laughs> that's an English cocktail. Uh, you haven't seen the English on a Friday night out. Or maybe you have. Okay, this could be like the contents of a... Uh, yeah. No. I won't go there. Comets are also rich in carbon dioxide, but of course, when we looked at the orbits of the comets, very, very elliptical, spending so much of their time out in this part of the solar system. In fact, there was too much time there. If we look at the orbits of comets, and we'll come to it in just a second, very elliptical, most of their time they are way out in the solar system where the temperatures are well below minus 78 degrees centigrade. And at minus 78 degrees centigrade, carbon dioxide will sublime directly into the solid state. So what I have here is some dry ice. Mm -hmm. And what I would ask you to do, and we'll be okay in terms of, um, you won't get any of your hands, is we just need to yeah. shoot for free. I have to add that there's okay. 10 kilos there. So, so if you start putting the dry ice in, you can take uh, some uh, uh, home. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We'll do one at a time, so if we okay. pour all this in, this is the Harry Potter moment, so let's yeah. pour it in. Okay, and could I have another one, please? Okay, and now, what we are starting to have is a battle between the carbon dioxide, which above minus 78 will try to send back into a gas and expand massively in volume, maybe 1,200 times. At the same time, thank you, that's great, the water around here is freezing, forming an ice cage that's trying to trap the carbon dioxide in. And so if I do this, what I should be starting to get forming in there, and then I close the lid, and I do this, and we can see the CO2 mm -hmm. subliming away. And what I should get forming in here is a pretty good analogue of a real comet yeah. nucleus. Now, dry ice in the United Kingdom, we can get it quite readily. It's about, uh, for 10 kilograms, would be maybe 15 to 20 euros. And it is perfectly safe to use in the schools in the United Kingdom. The one thing I would say, some schools have done this. They store their dry ice in a fridge. Please do not do that. Um, <laughs> One school I joined, they were doing it, and it's not good. And we, we ordered that to arrive just at lunchtime, so this is something that did the fridge explode. Okay, and <laughs> which one just getting me a pair of gloves from over there? I think there is a, a pair of gloves. The, the gloves are here. Ah, oh, it's okay, I've got them here. Okay, and what I should have in here that has formed is a pretty good analogue of a comet nucleus. Now this is where it can get messy, but if I am careful, which I mean I took a gamble in saying we didn't need a map, what we have out here is a pretty nice analogue of the real comet nucleus. Fred Whipple. And you can see that it is fizzing and popping away because we've got this constant, we've got this 
battle between the CO2 trying to sublime and between the water ice which is trying to cage it in. And so when this was theorized in the 1930s, even though the chemistry, the spectroscopy, the physics was telling us that this is what a comet nucleus is like, nobody was really sure, and it wasn't a NASA mission that actually proved the case. It was a European Space Agency mission called Giotto. So if you go back to your places, please, and um, I just want to go through.